Dr. Ahmed Taka, who is the chair of the Africa Healthcare Federation. Uh, Dr. Taka, thank you so much indeed. Um, do you know much of what's going on in uh, Tanzania? Does your federation understand what the problems are in terms of COVID-19 and the challenges people are facing there? Yeah, thank you for having me on the show. We are actually very concerned and frankly disappointed with what's happening in Tanzania. It's a neighboring country and we believe that science should be respected and should be played by the head of state. Not only is it disappointing, but I think it is against the principle of solidarity of the African continent. We have to find a solution. Um, we do know that there are patients suffering symptoms. We do know that there are admissions of COVID, but frankly, relying on prayers to save the lives of people is actually totally responsibility, which we all have to come together to try and change the mindset of the leadership that is extremely pediatric. Is anybody actually doing that from a scientific point of view or even the African Union from the political point of view? Good question and the answer is yes. I have seen WHO and the African Union and Africa CDC um, trying to engage at the moment with the country. As you know, every country in Africa is moving towards the global united fight against uh, the COVID pandemic in a similar manner. So I'm hoping uh, sooner or later Tanzania, who is our loved neighbor and um, is a country that also has many promising opportunities to embrace safety uh, through vaccinations. Of course, we understand that vaccines have different roles and different efficacies, but just maybe one or two studies should not literally shun vaccinations for people in Tanzania. I have also heard that people from Tanzania are now looking at traveling outside Tanzania to get themselves vaccinated, including uh, countries like Kenya, where they're planning to come for a visit to get themselves vaccinated because of the extreme high denial uh, political movement in that country. I mean, you say it's a much loved neighbor, uh, doctor, but do you think maybe tough love is required here now and that countries that behave like Tanzania, because it's not the only one, there are a few others, should be cut off from the rest of the world and say, until you come on board with the science, the accepted science, we're not going to let your people come into our territory? I think they'll take the brunt of the tough love and it is probably very likely that they will suffer the repercussions from the entire globe and will find themselves in an island of being left out. And uh, you're right, um, maybe Kenya and maybe other countries in East Africa need to literally have a, a, a total engagement scientifically. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's important. What are the chances of the virus mutating in Tanzania specifically? Because the scientific community seems to be indicating that these mutations are happening especially in countries where the virus is out of control? That's a very good point. I tend to feel that it's not much of a concern about the mutation. If you look at the demographics, the weather and the age profile of the Tanzanians, it's very similar to the rest of East Africa and Kenya. And we have seen plenty of mutations, but nothing near any variations that's affecting countries like South Africa. So it seems that the mutation is a little bit distant. I'm hoping that it remains that way. So it's not a big concern right now, as much as the concern for the scientific methodology to be embedded in the Tanzanian government. I know you're not a legal expert, but do you see the possibility and liability is often uh, a very important word <clears throat> in the medical uh, profession? Do you see the possibility of Tanzanians actually suing their government for denying them vaccines? It's very likely. I think it's a human rights question. And if citizens face death because of political irresponsibility, I think you're completely right in saying that if the whole world moved in a certain direction to save the loved ones, and if you saw a higher death rate there, the flag of human rights and legal liability is very likely the case. 
Uh, having said that, even the documentation of the people who are dying of respiratory conditions remains unclear. Uh, so it's a very complicated situation that Tanzania has put themselves in, including denying social distancing and throwing away the masks. So it's actually a double irresponsibility that I think will be slammed onto them. Dr. Amitaka, thank you so much indeed for your time.